yo, what is going on guys, your voice is right here, bringing guys distort materials, texture, surface, tutorial. Yeah, I don't know what to actually call this, but really what this tutorial is going to be showing you guys how to use displacement the right way and actually have a controlled displacement actually displace the object that you put the material on. Bang, I just said that perfectly, let's go. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, you know, this material or this little tutorial came from my pack that actually made like so much progress, I tried so hard on to actually make sure that the displacement actually works and actually has a really, really nice look and actually looks like the material itself that's shown. Uh, here's the pack itself. It's eight dollars. You can also purchase it down below. I did this, uh, I did a video on it yesterday, which people took it in such disrespect. It's unbelievable how many dislikes I got. I was just like, do you understand this is all for you? And actually did this, and I worked super hard on this. You can see that I worked super hard on it because my lack of you know tutorials, which will also by the way was going to change. By the way, I'm going to go back to my little regular schedule. But I worked so hard on them, and so many people just like took it such wrong ways. I was just like really upset. So, anyways. <laughs> Um, here's a tutorial on how to make, you know, like, the really dismace, like, displace, you know, really, really nice, really styles. I don't know what else to, to, to word this, or how to word this. But anyways, we're going to be using my favorite, or your favorite, uh, material from the material pack, uh, to show you the example of what I mean. So, you, obviously, if you didn't have displacement, this is what the material will basically look like. Obviously, if it's rendered, I'll be, like, more, uh, uh, shadowy and stuff like that. But this is how it would be without displacement and stuff. So, if I render it out really quickly, you want to see how really cool the displacement looks. And actually distorts the material itself or distorts the object. This is basically what the whole entire pack of this pack right here consists of is really making sure the displacement actually works and actually has a really, really nice look to it. So basically, we're going to be showing you guys how to do that. So sorry for the really long intro. So hopefully, you guys use the comment section below and use the skip button or whatever if you're complaining about that. But if I were to show you this really quickly, this is the example we're going to be using. We're going to be using Crazy Rocks from my 4K giveaway material that had no displacement on it or it had displacement on it but it actually didn't displace as much as it should have. So I'm going to render this out really quickly to show you guys what the whole thing is. So this is what like a basic material would be without displacement. So we're going to make this look like is like an actual rock with the displacements and highs and lows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the material. I'm going to go to uh, displacement and make sure this is checked to actually have it displaced. So once you do that, you want to go to texture and make sure this drop down right here and it's on layer. When you click on layer, this will turn black and then you see the word layer. You just click on this and it'll bring it to a more options like tab... Uh, just to change a lot, like change around, like in a little bit of effects and stuff like that. And this is what you're going to be using if you were to like have. We can use this on color and have layers. See how this works? How many layers I have, and like you know these little effects that I have here. Uh, so that's how this works. So if you want to do that, you know I have a tutorial on advanced um, materials, so you can do that. But anyways, this is about displacements. So what you do is go to layer and you go to image and you click on image. You want to find an image that has like some kind of like lava texture or a, a high and low, as in like vibrant colors. So you have a red and like a black. You want to have something like that that has, so it knows where to, like, like, uh, this is, like, a prime example right here. It's, like, so it has green, but in the middle it has, like, little black spots or black, you know, crevices. That's where, like, the crevices will form. So you want to have, like, textures like that, so like this or like that or like this one or, like, a rust material like this will work because this is red and this is, like, gray. So you want to have, like, two, like, shades in actual color. So nothing like this where it's, like, like two vibrant colors or something, like, that's plain color with no, you know, texture at all or some like, black or something like that. So don't have anything like that have something like, you know, lava or, you know, something like this. So anyways, once you find one you like, press open. Uh, this is, if this comes up for you, press no. And uh, what you do now is you want to go to shader, drop down, and click on the word noise. What this will do is, so this is also a displacement like help. So what you do is you make sure this is on overlay. Uh, once you do that, you click on the little picture of noise. And then you're back to a whole bunch of different settings for noise. So what you want to do, first of all, you want to change your color one. Make sure it's not super black, uh, as soon as it comes up. Anyways, make sure it's not super black. You just want to move it up a little bit. Uh, I, felt, I felt like this helps just a lot. For some odd reason, I think it helps a little, like, more than I actually know. But uh, when I did that, it just makes it look so much better. I just moved it from black to, like, a, just basically black still, but, like, a more of a gray touch to it. So once you see this noise right here, you have this whole bunch of options for a whole bunch of different displacement looks. You can see how this box one looks. So if I displaced it and kept it as this, this will like, it'll be like a boxy kind of uh, boxy kind of displace. Uh, this is all done by noise. Um, you know, if I click on this one, I have like this kind of displacement on it, or like if it has cell noise, I have like a little bit like this is what's on this one right here. You saw how that looked. It looks really really cool. There's a whole bunch of different ones. So there's like a whole bunch of like exploring you can do for new styles and stuff like this. But what I'm going to use is dense because um, dense is a really nice one I like. And uh, you can also change the C, which will also change the pattern texture. So I'm just going to put one three three seven. Is what I did for a lot of my materials. So you can see the, th the thing will change in a second. And oh my gosh, it's not changing. Am I like freezing? There we go. You saw it changed a little bit. You can see if I move it, it changes the shapes and like the pattern view. So this is the, this one looks really really cool to be honest. 
So uh, you can also change this to Aka, 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 Aka Daves, whatever. This is basically going to be showing you guys, if I move this up, there will be more white spots than black spots. So you don't want that. You want to have this. Make sure it's a little bit more lower than like usual. So make it about 5. Uh, once you did that, you can go back to displacement. And you can see the word strength, which will be either between like 40 or 45. Which you don't want too much displacement, you know? You want to have it controlled. If any moment you want to put it higher or lower, you just lower the strength. Uh, what you do... You can see the word height, which is also the, this is basically, it says 5 centimeters. That's how basically deep the depth between, like, you see how these little black spots, like these little dark spots, you see the red ones here? These little dark spots are going to be 5 centimeters deep. That's basically what it's kind of saying. Uh, so you want to keep this the height between, like, you know, 6 or 8 or something like that. So I'm going to put it at 7. Uh, that's what's going to make the displacement, like, the dents and the highs and lows really, really nice. And once you do that, you're basically done with that. But all you got to do is click this little drop down on sub polygon displacement. And this is what really gives it that really, really nice displacement. Uh, you click on the sub uh, polygon displacement box, and then once you do that, you have the subdivision level, and you change this from four to anything between four or eight to like or six to eight. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because if you don't have like a really high RAM, if your computer is like a little bit more slower than usual, like other computers and stuff like that, it, this highest it can go to is twelve. And if you're not having like a really not running a really really fast computer, you can have this. It looks really really gorgeous, like ridiculously nice. But if you don't have like you know a really nice RAM or you know you know CPU or whatever. When you render it out, it's going to be saying prepare displacement. It's going to have that for a very long time if you're not running a really nice computer. So you want to keep this between 6 or 8 to be safe. And uh, never click these two boxes here because this what this does is change the the object. If you put this material on the object, it'll, be, it'll change it to a circle, which you don't want that, obviously. And you don't want to have this either checked. So just don't have anything else checked. Once you do that, you're basically done. So I'm going to show you guys. You remember the render I did before? If you did not, go back to the video at the start of the video when I first rendered it. Uh, rendered, rendered it. It's going to be in the comment section below if you want to like go back to it and then come back to here or whatever. If I render it out now, you're going to see a lot of different, you know, dents and like uh, just really nice highs and lows. You can see how this works already. You can see how like the dents are like you see the black spots, the dents are here. And you can see how the edges are now rasterized or messed around with. And it's a really, 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 really nice feel for any new styles for banners and, you know, just to mess around with the, the object that you have itself. It's just really nice. You can be using it for, you know, your renders and stuff like that. But uh, this is like a, I, like I said, I, I did use like a different, like, uh, preset to dents. But, like I said, if you change around with the seed a little bit, it'll change, like, the whole entire, like, field. And it's really, really nice. So hopefully you guys enjoy the tutorial. And uh, obviously if you want to purchase the Distort Material Pack, it's also down below. It comes with 15 at first, but it comes with 30 in the next update. So if you buy it now, the email of your PayPal will be sent an email too when it has an update. So you'll get the update also. So don't worry about that. But if you want to purchase it, you can. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me so much. I just, I'm 4.3K or something now. It's like ridiculous. You guys are just awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Sister Show. Peace.